Got another question for the enthalpy and entropy topic. So this one deals with enthalpy and focuses on enthalpy changes of solution. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So the question starts out with the definition, what's meant by enthalpy change of solution. So that's the enthalpy change when one mole of a solid or a solute, you could say, is dissolved. And it's always a good idea, if you can, is back up what you're saying with an equation. So in the case of magnesium fluoride, you've got one mole of MgF2 solid going to a mole of Mg2 plus aqueous ions and two moles of F minus aqueous ions. Next part of the question, we've got to add the formulae of the species present on these dotted lines, not forgetting state symbols. I'm going to add some extra information on as well. I'm going to talk about what the um, enthalpy changes are, because obviously that will help when it comes to the calculation. So we'll starting with this enthalpy change here, this is the enthalpy change of solution for the magnesium fluoride. So on this line we need a mole of Mg2 plus aqueous and two moles of F minus aqueous. Not required for the question, but we do need to know that this change here, going from gaseous ions to the solid lattice, is the lattice enthalpy. So going down the right hand side now, you can see we're going from gaseous ions to ultimately both of them aqueous. So these are the hydration enthalpies. So within the cycle, these are treated as separate stages. So I always do the metal first. So that means I would need to write Mg2 plus aqueous. So that's the only change and we'll keep the 2F minus gaseous. You could do that the other way around, by the way. You could have the fluorides as aqueous and the magnesium 2 plus still as gaseous. But I always do it metal first, then non-metal. And then obviously the second hydration enthalpy would be for the gaseous fluoride ions going to aqueous fluoride ions. Moving on to the calculation then. So we've got to calculate the enthalpy change of solution. So I like to use a vector approach. So if we want to go from here to here, there's another way to do that. You can go up there and then down there. So if you look at the direction of the arrows, you can see that this arrow is in the wrong direction for this route. So we're going to subtract that one. But we're going to add these two together. So before I put the numbers in, just a reminder that we're going to need to double the hydration enthalpy for the fluoride ion because in the cycle we have two moles. Obviously the value in the table is per mole. So there's the numbers in and just be really careful with your signs. And the answer comes out at minus 6 kilojoules per mole for that enthalpy change of solution. So final part of the question now, you'll notice I've copied up the um, enthalpy cycle just to refer to, to help explain this. It's a little bit tricky, um, but hopefully this will make sense. Right, so we've got to think about what, um, which enthalpy changes are going to be impacted by changing the halide ion. So obviously the magnesium halides all contain magnesium ions, so therefore the hydration enthalpy won't change for the magnesium. However, the lattice enthalpy is going to change and the hydration enthalpy for the halide ion is also going to change. So we've got to think about how that will be affected by change in the halide. So we'll start off by saying the ionic radius of the halides will increase going down the group. So what's the effect of that? Well, the lattice enthalpy and the enthalpy change of hydration of the halide ion, they'll both decrease or get less exothermic as that ion gets bigger. So factoring that into the cycle, these two arrows are going to get shorter. So if the lattice enthalpy was affected more than the hydration enthalpy of the halide ion, this arrow would shrink more significantly than that one. So it's going to pull this line up and the enthalpy change of solution is going to get more exothermic. If, however, the hydration enthalpy was affected more, so this arrow shrinks more than this one, it's obviously going to pull the bottom line up and it's going to shorten the enthalpy change of solution and obviously make it less exothermic. So why is it difficult to predict whether the enthalpy change of solution gets more or less exothermic? It's basically because we don't know which of these has the most significant effect.